Thank you for being with us today. Again, my name is David Douglas. I want to welcome you to the Douglas Family History YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Sir James Douglas, and otherwise he was known as the Black Douglas, a very colorful character uh, that is within the Douglas family tree. If you would, please subscribe uh, to this YouTube channel. And maybe give us a thumbs up. Like I said, we'd love to hear from you. Make a comment. So today, like I said, we're going to be talking about Sir James Douglas. Otherwise, he's known as the Black Douglas. He was also known as Sir James the Good Douglas. Sir James Douglas was born about 1286 in Scotland. His father was Sir William the Hardy, Lord of Douglas. And Sir William the Hardy, Lord of Douglas, his first wife, they had, uh, as a child, they had Sir James Douglas. And evidently, you know, I don't know if really if we found out what took place, but, you know, she might have died. But his second wife, you know, he had some other children and, uh, one of the sons that was born to him, also by the second wife, is actually, you know, I'm a direct descendant from him, and his name was Sir Archibald Tinyman Douglas. So, Sir Archibald Tinyman Douglas and Sir James Douglas, I mean, they were brothers. Uh, might as well say, you know, they say today brothers from another mother. They had the same father. But this Sir James Douglas is in the same family tree, so to speak, uh, that, that I'm a part of, that even Archibald, uh, who was his brother, like I said, from another mother, uh, because Sir William the Hardy Douglas, who was Lord of Douglas, uh, his father was Sir William Longleg. He was another Lord of Douglas. Then Sir William Longleg, his father was Archibald I, who was Lord of Douglas. And then Archibald I, Lord of Douglas, his father was William de Douglas, the first one to take on, as we know in, in records, to take on the Douglas name. So, Sir William, Sir James Douglas, like I said, was born about 1286 in Scotland. His father was Sir William the Hardy, Lord of Douglas, and his mother was Elizabeth Stewart. His father, Sir William the Hardy, Lord of Douglas, was the first noble supporter of William Wallace. Sir James Douglas's father would die as a prisoner in the Tower of London around the year 1298. Sir William Douglas was actually sent to Paris, France, actually for safety for his life, and also really for an, uh, an education at the very early start of Scotland's wars uh, of independence. So he received an education while he was there in Paris, France. But when he returned to Scotland, his lands had been seized. And he petitioned the English court for his lands to be returned or restored to him. But when King Edward I of England heard whose son that he was of her, when he learned out, you know, when he learned who, you know, Sir James Douglas, when he learned who his father was, you know, it, it, it made, as far as the King of England, you know, very angry, and uh, Sir James Douglas was forced to depart uh, out of that, I reckon, out of the English court and out of the presence of the King. But then Sir James Douglas, you know, he did not give up, and he, he would join in the fight for Scotland's independence. He pledged his strength or excuse me, he pledged his loyalty and he joined up with Sir Robert the Bruce when he attended the coronation there at a place called Scone in Scotland. 
And this was dated in March, the year 1306. Sir James Douglas became a close friend and a lieutenant of Robert the Bruce. Sir James Douglas was actually a real skilled fighter and he mastered in the art of guerrilla warfare. And before Robert the Bruce's death, he asked actually Sir James Douglas to take his heart, his physical heart, to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, and bury it in the church of the Holy Sepulchre. It had been said, you know, Robert the Bruce thought, you know, by doing this, that he would be expressing, you know, uh, repentance, so to speak, for killing a man named John Conyon. This took place in a church, and history states that it happened even on the altar of that church. So after the death of Robert the Bruce, they took the heart of Robert the Bruce out and they put it in a little silver metal, metal box, put a chain around it, and Sir James Douglas wore it around his neck. So Sir James Douglas set out to Jerusalem at Robert the Bruce's request. But yet he ended up stopping off where a battle was taking place at a place called Teba, Spain. He stopped to help a friend named William, Sir William Sinclair. And as the story goes, he went into this battle along with his soldiers and comrades. And they said while charging the enemy's lines, he took the little silver box that had the heart of Robert the Bruce around his neck, from around his neck, and he threw it into the enemy's lines. This enemy was called, these people were called the Moors. And they said that Sir James Douglas shouted out this, it was like a battle cry as he slung the heart of Robert the Bruce into the enemy's lines. He shouted out, Onward, brave heart, Douglas will follow thee or die. And he did die there that day. And that date was August the 25th in the year 1330 at that place called Teba, Spain, T-E-B-A, Spain. There's even a monument there today commemorating that event. Got Sir James Douglas's name on it and Robert the Bruce and about uh, that event that took place where Sir James Douglas threw the heart of Robert the Bruce uh, into the enemy's lines. And our family crest, our um, coat of arms has actually a red heart in it. You can see behind me, this is actually the, uh, the, the family crest or the coat of arms for the, and, and there's different clans in, in the Douglas clan, but we, we actually probably stemmed off the same man, William D. Douglas. So this is the Queensberry Drumland Rig Scotland, our Douglas, a specific Douglas clan, and it's got a heart in it. And right above it, actually, the one symbol of, of the Drumland Rig Castle, and they got actually a lot of it engraved in the stone. There is a heart with wings on the side of it. And on top of the heart, there is a crown. And this actually represents the heart of Robert the Bruce. But yet, the Douglas clan took it as part of uh, I reckon that the symbolism, you know, that, that, that our family was close 
uh, with the Bruce's, so to speak. And I, I've got a, other things here, and this is one of the, I reckon, the original coat of arms, and it's got in the middle of it the heart with the crown over it. And this is part of our, um, I reckon, you know, coat of arms uh, because of this event. And I heard even in the beginning the first coat of arms even for Sir James Douglas. And there is a, what I call a blue stripe with three stars and that's all that was on there. But after this event took place, the Douglas clan incorporated and placed that heart with the crown over it on our family crest or our, our coat of arms. So, but thinking about, like I said, what James Douglas shouted on that day, on that Teba Spain battlefield, as he threw the heart of Robert the Bruce, onward, he said, brave heart, Douglas will follow thee or die. Thinking about that, our family motto, I, I know one of them is, you know, uh, and I can't pronounce as far as, maybe I don't know if it's in Latin or Gaelic, but, but one of them says as far as never behind, but the main family motto is forward. Forward. So, that day on that battlefield, they say legend has it that they retrieved the body of Sir James Douglas. In fact, they said even when they uh, after the battle was over and they were collecting and retrieving the bodies, they came across Sir James Douglas. One legend has it that when they picked his body up, he was laying on top of that little silver box with a chain over it. Now, the heart of Robert the Bruce never made it as far as to Jerusalem to be buried in the church of the Holy Sepulcher. They took the body of Sir James Douglas and even the heart of Robert the Bruce that was in that little silver, might as well say like little silver uh, box or casket. They took it back to Scotland and Sir James Douglas was buried at a church called the St. Bride's Church. And Robert the Bruce's heart was buried at Melrose Abbey. They say that there was even a nursery rhyme that used to be sung to children, and maybe even the children sung it in Scotland, that went something like this, and I'm just going to read it out. Hushy, hushy, ye little pet ye, hushy, hushy, do not fret ye. The black Douglas shall not get ye. Some scholars and researchers have said that most of Scotland's history could not have been written if it wasn't for the Douglas clan. And they've even said that they were one of the most powerful clans in Scotland. So, that, that, that is what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, like I said, in, in, in the Douglas family tree, that there are several, what I would call, colorful characters. They were brave. And we, we could see that they were real close, I mean, with, with royalty. You know, even with it goes on even, even, even into the kings of England, how that some of our family was even, uh, had even married in uh, with even some of the kings of England, even some of their family. And I believe it even goes back to King James. There's even a Douglas somewhere connected there. And maybe I'll bring that out in one of our videos. Like I said, they were real close with the, what I would call the ducal courts of Normandy. Uh, so they were real, like I said, so close and even loyal as far as to royalty 
Uh, some of them even, like I said, they, they owned lands and they had titles of nobility. So thank you for listening to us today on this subject about Sir James Douglas, who was known as the Black Douglas. He was a close friend and lieutenant to who I would even call one of the kings of Scotland. Some have called him the outlaw king. So thank you for listening to us today. Subscribe to this channel. Go back into our, so to speak, our Douglas family history, you know, library uh, that we have these videos, you know, on YouTube that, that, that talks about the certain Douglas family. Maybe yours may be in it, and maybe this will help you. So thank you for listening today. Just remember the family motto, forward.